Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dark Souls walkthrough. And in here, a soul of a great hero. There we go. So, in the last episode, we finished up the DLC, and in this episode, it is time to get back to the main game. But yeah, just wanted to tie up this loose end as we start. So this is the first island of the the big lava lake in Lost Isolith. And yeah, I forgot to pick this up the first time, but there you go. Soul of a Great Hero, the second one in the game. So there we go. Now, it is time for us to continue with the main game. So where are we going next? Well, we're going somewhere familiar. I will see you there. All right, so here we are. Back at good old Andre. Hmm, that's an odd ember you have there. Ah, I know what you're thinking. But I'm no good with those. It won't be easy, but I'm afraid you'll have to look for someone else. So Andre's referring to probably the multiple embers that we have. None of them are good for good old Andre here, but that's fine. And I need to uh, consume some souls. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, now we have the souls. So, why are we here at Andre? Well, it is because we're going to purchase an item. Remember this? The Crest of Artorias? Indeed, it is time to buy it. Yeah, yeah. Because it is finally time to make our way into the next half of the Darkroot Garden. That's right, it is time for Darkroot Garden Part 2, also known as the Darkroot Wood. So I'll see you at that door. Alright, here we are, at the door. So, let us open this bad boy with the Crest of Artorias. So, Crest of Artorias. What does Artorias have to do with this place? Well, remember what I said? He was buried in the Darko Garden. That's right. We are heading to his grave. Because we need something from him. A way to traverse the abyss. So. In this place, you're going to encounter some interesting and tough enemies. These enemies right here. These are people just like you. And they're very strong. So the enemies are a knight, which is this one, and there's a sorcerer in the back, and there's more. They are fairly tough, but if you encounter them late in the game, they're not too difficult. So obviously I'm fighting them a little late, so I can beat them like they're nothing. And these guys will actually give you an awful lot of souls, which makes them good to our farm. Although unfortunately not all of them respawn, so the knight... The knights will not respawn, but the rest of them should. Now there's one around here somewhere, where is he? Oh, here he is. Sneaky little slick. He's a thief. But again, he is nothing before my claymore. So if you need to farm souls, this is a good place to go. Although, be sure to uh, farm the souls first before doing what's next in this area. Because otherwise it'll make it a bit difficult to do so. You'll see what I mean. So yeah, anyway, that was the uh, the cleric and this one over here, the bandit. Who hits very hard, so watch out for him. Oh, here we go, he's down. And none of them drop anything, but there's some more over here. So over here, the hunter. And the hunter will of course wield a bow and another knight who wields a claymore, just like me. Like, like me. Oh. oh my goodness. That was a lot of damage. Christ. I knew these guys hit hard, but I didn't know they hit that hard. Bloody hell. Okay, well I guess I'll have to come back here. Okay, time for round two, you bastards. So yes, watch out for the knights. They are pretty powerful. But again, they don't respawn. So, so long as you kill them once, you'll be fine. But yeah, watch out for them. Smash, smash. My claymore's better than yours. There we go. My claymore's better than yours, bitch. Now this hunter also will not respawn, but this hunter is very important, so let's kill him. They wield a falchion and a special bow. And they're also a female. 
Here we go. They were caught in a never-ending loop of changing their weapon there for some reason. And we get 5,000 souls from that. Lovely. Twin Humanities, Black Bow of Ferris and Ferris's Hat. Indeed. So the Black Bow of Ferris is basically one of, if not the best bow in the game, by the way. It has a very long effective range, it scales really well with dexterity, and just does great damage all around. And also you hold it, like, awesome. I wonder if I can use it, actually. Uh, I can. I can. Nice. I might actually use this, to be honest. Yeah, I think I will, actually. But yeah, there you go. The Black Bow of Ferris. Look how you hold that. It's awesome. So yeah, I think I'm actually going to use this bow from now on. So there you go. Yeah, I can still fast roll. Alright, I'm going to use that from now on. Because it, as I said, it scales really well with dexterity. Really long effective range. Really good bow all around. Highly recommend it. Now over here, there's some some of these treant guys. Or as we now know, the gardeners. And again, if you're leveled like I am, then these guys will be of no threat to you. These guys are old hat. Chop. Chop. These guys go down like nothing. Now, there's an important item over here that I must get, but it's guarded by like 5 million of these guys. But again, these guys are nothing to me. I have grown powerful. You guys are nothing. I can just tank your damage like it's nothing. Alright, and over here, very important item. Don't miss it. The Eastern Armour. Is it not awesome? The Eastern Armour is wicked. It's like this sort of Japanese sort of looking armour. It's really cool. Highly recommend it. Alright, uh, I don't... Can't, I can't remember if there's much more here. I don't think so. Oh, blooming purple moss clump, always nice to have. Yeah, I don't think there's much more here, just a bunch more of these guys everywhere. Okay, so next up we need to head down here. So down here. Doesn't this look familiar? Yep, that's right. This is where we fought Calamite in uh, the DLC. Down there was the path towards him. And down there was the Darku Basin, which of course is where we fought him. So you have two ways to go here. You can go across there, which will take you to the set to the next part of the Dark Root uh, Woods, or we can head down here, which is where I'm gonna go. I'm not interested in going over there just yet. So down here is an item. Soul of a Brave Warrior, always nice. Don't fall in the water, you will drown. What do you think I can swim with this heavy armor on? Now over here is something that is worth noting. Over here, across this bridge, there's the Darko Basin down there. And over here, this I believe is actually the same uh, ladder they used to get down to uh, Kalamit, I think. And if you climb down here, you will actually be able to go down there to the Darko Basin. So you don't actually have to buy the Crest of Artorias to get into the second part of the Darkwood Garden. You can just take the ladder, although you will have to fight past the Hydra in order to use that. So take your pick. It is a good bit of information to know, although the Crest of Artorias is it's not that expensive and it's just the more convenient option. But take your pick. Anyway, I will see you back at the place. Alright, now in here, who is this? You look, um, familiar. Is it not so that thou art new? Thou fared well to find me. But cometh thee not for the grave of Sir Artorius? My advice true. Forget this. The legend of Artorius art none but a fabrication. Traversing the dark. "'Tis but a fairy tale. Have thine own respect. Go not yonder knocking for nothing, I say." Yes. Well, indeed, thou art a strange one. Nevertheless, I feel some liking for thee. I'm Alvina of the Dark Root Wood. I command a clan of hunters who track down defilers of the forest graves. 
What dost thou say? Wilt thou not join us? Oh, yes, I believe we would suit thee well. Sounds like a right old good time to me. I am very glad. And now thou art one of us. Let us establish a covenant. Sure. And here taketh this ring. If thou wearest that ring, it allows for thine summoning. If mine senses reveal intruders, then I will summon thee. Fend them off, sir, I beseech only this. I shall summon others who will, by their honour, work tirelessly with thee. Thou shalt receive great reward, and whatsoever ye shall pillage will be thine own. A true agreement, not so. But thou must heed the golden rule. The clan is thine own family. To thine kinsmen forever stay true. Darest not in any attempt to double-cross. Have no doubt. Such wretchedness never will we tolerate. So, Alvina of the Darkroot Wood and the Forest Hunter Covenant. This is quite a bit to go over. Basically, this covenant is one of the best PvP covenants. It's a covenant that's all about uh, wearing that ring, and then whenever intruders who aren't a member of the covenant come to this area, you will get summoned in, or have a chance of getting summoned in, to fend them off in PvP. It's pretty awesome. But of course, as she said, if you kill one of the clansmen, then you will be considered a traitor, and you will never be able to rejoin the covenant. You can leave the covenant by joining a different covenant, but you can't kill uh, one of the clansmen. If you do that, you can never rejoin. So don't do that if you want to join this, if you want to stay in this covenant. But yeah, this covenant's pretty swish. I like it. And Alvina's an interesting character. She seems to say that the Legend of Arturus is a fabrication. Well, funny thing is, it's kind of true, actually. And she does look familiar. Isn't she the one who led us to Sif in the past? Hmm. Lots to mull over. Anyway, who are you? You appeared out of nowhere. I've heard all about you. I'm Shiva of the East, captain of the brigade. Let's teach you the clan basics now, as there's no time to chat in the midst of fighting. Except there is little in the form of rules, you hear? Fight and hunt as you like. Whoever's fastest gets the prey. That's the way we do it. Only, don't forget what Arvina said. Traitors aren't given a second chance for any reason. That's about it then. Don't worry. It's a good old time, isn't it? Great to have you with us. Good hunting to you. Shiva of the East. Interesting character. Wields really, wields a really cool weapon and shield. That weapon is the Murakumo, by the way. It's pretty awesome. And that shield is the Iron Round Shield, I believe. Which I believe only he has. So the only way to get it, I believe, is to kill him. So, yeah. Although I don't recommend that. Unless you really want to. And of course, his armor is the Eastern armor. Look how wicked it looks. Anyway. Don't worry now. You'll be called in soon enough. Hunters with patience score the best kills. I love his voice. It has a very clear Japanese accent to it. Now, speaking of Japanese, you see them in the back? A ninja. He wears the shadow set, which of course is the ninja armor we found in Blighttown. He doesn't say anything. He wields a katana and a little shield. Ah, did you notice that one? Sharp eyes? He is one of the clan from the east, like myself. Always slinking in the shadows. But he is a tough one. You will see what I mean. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that, but sure. 
Now, fun fact. If you kill these guys, you will be kicked from the Covenant, and they won't appear unless you're in the Covenant. So killing these guys will guarantee that you can't rejoin the Covenant, so I don't recommend doing it unless you really just don't want to be in the Covenant. But yeah, if you kill these guys, uh, killing Shiva, I think, as I said, will give you the Iron Round Shield, which is that shield there, I think. But more importantly, killing his ninja friend here will actually give you a special ring called the Dark Root, uh, Dark Root Grain Ring, Dark Wood Grain Ring, something like that. And it will actually change your uh, roll to a ninja flip, which is pretty awesome. And not only does it look cool, but it also means you can roll more often. And also it means that your rolling has more invincibility frames. So it's actually pretty good for you, for you people who like to roll a lot. I've done playthroughs with it, it's pretty awesome. But again, be aware, killing them will mean that you will be kicked from the Covenant and you can never rejoin. Until the next playthrough, obviously. Anyway, round here, there's an item. Stone armor. The armor of the uh, Stone Knights. Very nice. Heavy armor set, but pretty strong. Very good. So, remember this place? It's the first area of the Royal Wood. And over here, mushrooms. Just like Elizabeth, only these ones have legs. But they're pretty passive. They don't have they're not they don't attack you or anything. Although these ones over here they will. Now these ones are some of the most powerful enemies in the game. They're very slow and they only have like one attack basically, but it will hurt like the bitch. It's basically a dragon punch and it will take off your entire health bar. It is ridiculously powerful attack. So yeah, watch the hell out for these guys. Do not underestimate the mushrooms. But they do drop gold pine resin, which is quite nice. So yeah, again, do not get hit by those dragon punches. They will kick your ass. Many a meme have spawned from these guys because of their insanely powerful punches. But there we go, they're not too difficult so long as you keep your distance. And in here, the Enchanted Ember. A very good item for you uh, sorcerers out there. Basically, enchanted weapons, as I said earlier, with the Enchanted Falchion, which we found in Duke's Archives. Enchanted weapons basically are the best sorcery weapons. They scale really well with intelligence and all around are pretty damn nice. So yeah, good one for you sorcerers out there. Now over here, there's an item, Large Soul of Brave Warrior. And over here, some of the most trouble troublesome enemies in the game. You don't have to fight them, but they are worth noting. And it is, and you should know that if you come up the ladder next to the uh, Hydra, you will have to fight these guys. So yeah, be aware. There they are. Big cats. Now, oh, they will try and bite you, and they are pretty tough. And they do some good damage. They're not too difficult if you get up close, but it's if they get far away from you, they become an issue. So I recommend staying to the side of them, and that should allow you to defeat them. Come here. Come here, big guy. There we go. Oh, crap. And here's some more. Oh crap, here's some more. But yeah, if you oh god. But yeah, you can you can take shelter in the trees and if you stand far away from them, if they will do a special move, which is very troubling. Ow. Oh god, that one there. That roll. That Sonic style roll. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much cannot be dodged and cannot be blocked. Well not I think it can be dodged, but you have to but it's quite hard to dodge. And yeah, they'll only do that if they're if they're far away from you. They do it to get up close to you. Oh god. It's quite a bastard. But they only do it once they're far they only do it when they're far away from you. So once they're up close, they won't do it anymore. So you'll be safe. Lower, lower, bait it out. Come on. Come on. Come on, kitty. Oh. Come on. Yeah, not gonna do it. Fine. Then I'll just smack you dead. Here we go. 
I don't think they drop anything and they're not guarding anything, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the main purpose of them. If you come up behind, if you come up through the ladder behind the Hydra, then you will have to fight through them in order to get through to this next area. So yeah, beware of them. But that's the easiest way to fight them. Don't get hit by their roll and dodge the side and they should be relatively simple. Now over here, again, doesn't this bridge look familiar? Indeed it does. Are we heading into the Ulysseal Sanctuary? Well, we are, but it was the Ulysseal Sanctuary. Now it's something different. Much different. This place has become the grave site of a great hero. Just gonna drink up, don't mind me. Yep. It's a bit hard to make out, but yeah. It's Artorius' sword. This is the grave of Artorius. This is where he was buried. So. It is time to claim what we came here for. Great Grey Wolf, Sif. Yep, Sif. Still here after all this time. All grown up. Protecting his master's grave. But unfortunately, we have to fight. Now that cutscene you saw, that is not the normal cutscene. Normally Sif will just grab the sword and get ready to fight you. But because we saved Sif in the past, he recognises us. But he must still fight us, because it is his duty to protect his master's grave. So, Sif is one of my absolute favourite bosses in the franchise, because Sif is pretty damn good mechanically, but the best thing is the music and the lore. Sif is probably the saddest boss fight in the franchise. So, Sif... He will swing around the sword and you have to dodge through the attacks like any other boss and the timings are all pretty easy to figure out and yeah it's not a particularly difficult boss but he's pretty fast so it can be a bit tricky. Basically the goal is to dodge through the attacks and get underneath Sif and then you can get in some nice hits but again be aware because some of the attacks will come out pretty fast and they'll be pretty hard to avoid, like that one there especially. And Sif will also move around a lot, so he can be a little bit hard to keep track of. Oh. Again, staying underneath him is probably the safest tactic. Ow! And with that one I recommend dodging to the right, not to the left, because it's a double swing. Man, I'm sorry, Sif, but it has to be done. I need what you have, and I know that you must fight to protect your master's grave. Neither of us want this, but it has to be done. I'm sorry, old friend. Ow. 
Now, this boss can be done very, very early. You can actually do this boss, like, right after the Bell Tower Gargoyles, if you want. And it will be very difficult, but it is possible. But we're doing it later, so yeah, it's a bit more on the easier side, but still definitely not easy. I might die here because we're all out of healing. Oh, watch out for that slam. Oh, oh, ow. God, that does a lot of damage. But ow. Oh my god. We might die here because I ran out of healing before I got here. Okay, underneath him. Ow! Oh, God. You got me, boy. You're still a good boy. Still a strong old wolf. But alas, I can't just give up. Alright. Take two, Sif. Whether we like it or not, one of us has to walk away from here alive. And we both know that it can't be you. Right, need my souls, need my souls, there they are. Okay, right, let's go. Come on, boy. Let's fight one last duel. Ouch! Okay, yo, good. Oh. Sif's attacks come pretty fast, so you have to be sure to dodge quickly. You need quick reaction times against Sif. Quick reaction times and good timing. That's what this fight's all about. It's a pretty good one. Very good one. I think it's one of the best. As I said, I think it's one of the best in the original game. Probably the second best in the main game, besides Ornstein and Smo. Well, and another one, actually. So third best in the main game, I'd say. Come on, boy. Let's go. Let's do it. Give me all you got. Show me what you got, boy. Okay. Ouch. Okay. He's going down. Come on, boy. Let's make this a great final duel. An honourable duel worthy of two warriors. Okay. Now. This is it. When he, when he reaches low health, Sif will start limping. His attacks will become weak and his attacks will become slower. He can barely even keep his balance anymore. And there's one more thing as well. Sorry boy, it had to be done. He can barely even stand up anymore. Sorry boy. Get the covenants of Artorius and Sif's soul. Farewell, boy. Rest in peace. You were a great, great wolf. And a good friend. And if that weren't enough, there's more sadness. And here there's a corpse. With the hornet ring. The hornet ring belonged to a uh, siren. And this is Sartorius' grave. Yeah. Just when you thought this game couldn't punch you in the heart more, it goes and does it. Just tug on those heartstrings until they snap, why don't you? <sighs> anyway, that's going to do it for the Dark Root Garden Part 2, guys. Pretty sad episode, but hey, it's not called Dark Souls for nothing. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Rest in peace, boy. You were a good wolf. Goodbye.